Hello YouTube, I'm Toby and today we're taking a look at this uh, weird uh, custom made 3D printed uh, ITX uh, case that I found online. Now furthermore I also managed to find a Sempron 3850, an uh, AMD APU that I thought was worth uh, taking a look at and uh, benchmarking. But before we get into the build and the benchmarks, let's uh, take a better look at these parts individually. Alright, so these are the uh, parts we'll be using in this build. Uh, let's uh, take a closer look at these parts uh, individually. Now right here we have the actual reason for this build. This is a custom made 3D printed uh, ITX uh, case. Now as you can see from the back, there's just enough room for a ATX power supply and a uh, motherboard in the uh, ITX format. There's no room for a designated graphics card, which is the reason I chose the CPU that I chose, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, as you can also see, there's a fan. I believe this is a 120mm fan in the front. I'm not sure I'm going to use this particular fan. I might take it out and exchange it with another one just to give it a little more flash. Now, the structural integrity of this case is not the best. There are a few cracks. You can see one right here that pretty much goes through all of this right here. And there are a few more cracks uh, somewhere around over there. Was right here on the side. There's there's another crack, so that's not too good. And this right here is a White Tech uh, ATX 350 watt power supply. I think this may be way more power than we'll actually need, but it's better to have uh, too much than too little, I guess. Now this right here is a 32 gigabyte uh, two and a half inch SSD. Now I realize that 32 gigabytes is so uh, not that much, but um, I guess it'll be fine for this build. Besides, this was uh, on sale and it's very cheap. We also have uh, two sticks of uh, DDR3 RAM. These are two gigabytes each, giving the system a total of uh, four gigabytes. And right here we have an ASUS AM1 IA um, ITX motherboard. Uh, I haven't really. I've only heard the. Uh, boring and bad things about the AM1 platform, but this is uh, the only ITX board I had laying around. Now this is the CPU we'll be using. This is the AMD Sempron 3850. Now this is an uh, APU, meaning that it has uh, integrated Radeon graphics. Uh, it's also a quad core, uh, however it's only uh, clocked at um, 1.3 GHz, so not a powerful processor, but we'll, we will be uh, benchmarking it uh, later. And here we have all the uh, remaining things. We have a, uh, a power button, some wires, some heat shrink, a uh, LED 120 millimeter fan. This is the one I'm thinking of uh, using instead of the other one. Bag of screws and a uh, bag of heat sink.
All right, so we are currently in the uh, BIOS, well, the uh, UEFI uh, BIOS, and it is picking up uh, our total memory of uh, 4 gigs, and the uh, Sempron is also being uh, picked up, so that is awesome. All right, so the uh, build is complete. Now, building in this case was not as uh, challenging as I thought it would be. I thought I'd be spending all day uh, trying to get this to work, but it only took me a few hours, actually. Now, I did have to uh, disassemble it again since I forgot to plug in a SATA connector, and then the original power button I had installed uh, did not seem to uh, work. I don't know why. Uh, so I had to dig around for a, my spare power button, and now I have a gaping hole in the side of my case. This is, however, something I'm gonna have to take care of later, but uh, just for right now, I'm just happy that this thing actually works. And we look at it, I mean, this thing is gorgeous. The only thing I really reg regret uh, when I chose the parts for this thing that is that I chose the cheapest and lowest capacity SSD that I could find, which was the 32 gigabyte one. And because of this, I've almost <laughs> already run out of disk space uh, installing my uh, benchmarking tools and my games. Talking about benchmarks, we are uh, in a little while going to be running a Cinebench R15 and a Fermark Preset 720p and Counter-Strike Source. The reason why I chose Counter-Strike Source instead of uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is, uh, well, there's not enough room on the uh, SSD, unfortunately. Now, I am considering uh, drilling out a, a few extra holes just to see if I can get a uh, secondary uh, D drive in there just to get some more space to play around with this thing. Now Steam is still installing Counter-Strike Source, so uh, in the meantime I figured we could talk about the, this uh, Sempron processor. Now this is the old uh, AMD Sempron 3850 as I talked about before. I also have the 2650, but I found the 3850 for a decent bargain, so I figured I'd go with that instead. Also this is a quad core, whereas the 2650 is a dual core. The 2650, however, is clocked at 1.45 gigahertz and this is only 1.3 gigahertz and just like the 2650 this only has a TDP of uh, 25 watts so this is actually quite a low power system all right so I got bored by uh, while the computer was installing counter-strike source so I figured I wanted to take a look at the uh, YouTube capabilities of this uh, system Right now it's uh, playing on uh, 720p uh, HD at full screen and it's uh, doing it this without uh, any hiccups. And keep in mind it's also installing a Counter-Strike Source and running Steam in the background so yeah this thing might actually be a pretty decent uh, home theater PC. And Steam finally, finally managed to install Counter-Strike Source and we are currently running the Cinebench R15 uh, CPU benchmark. and. Uh, the program is seeing all four cores and four threads, so I'm really not sure what to expect from this. I'm thinking somewhere around 100, maybe 150, but I guess we'll see. 106 points. Um, I guess this is in uh, in the margin of my expectations, but it's definitely in the uh, low end. Now the Fermark Preset 720p test is definitely uh, lagging, to say the least. I am not expecting a high score off of this one. A mere 191 points, uh, I guess this was to be uh, expected with this one. Now we are running the uh, Counter-Strike Source uh, benchmarking tool and we have the uh, settings set to between medium and high. So I'm actually quite excited to see what uh, what kind of frame rate we're getting. Uh, it does seem like it's playable right now but uh, nothing sure yet. Alright, 97 frames per second, not bad. Well, great, so that was my uh, build and uh, benchmark of the uh, Sempron uh, 3850. Now, what did we learn from these benchmarks? Well, the Sempron is definitely uh, not the world's uh, best processor. However, the Sempron line is actually fairly cheap. Uh, they're some of the uh, cheapest uh, APUs out there, especially uh, that you can find that are still uh, new in the box, so to speak. Now I do think that this uh, 3850 Sempron did a fairly good job at being a media PC processor. Now you're not going to get uh, a very good gaming benchmark out of this processor, that is that is uh, certain. But if all you want is a cheap media PC processor and you have an AM1 motherboard laying around, well sure the uh, Sempron line might uh, be uh, be worth taking a look at.
Now don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.